Hello everybody and welcome back to the TSF studios in my lovely dining room. I am TSF, your host. Today I want to talk about Alice. No, not Alice. I'm talking about the all-purpose lightweight individual carrying equipment. Now this also included the LBE, the load-bearing equipment, the old school style, but I'm not going to talk about that. I want to talk about the large LC2 Alice pack as a possible bug out solution. Okay, I'm not. There have been a ton of videos uh, on this particular pack. I'm not going to uh, belabor it because it's been reviewed uh, in other places, but I'll go over it real quick. External aluminum frame, two quick release shoulder straps, one uh, lumbar pad. I won't even. I mean, it, this is pretty much ineffectual uh, with a, a hip belt. Um, huge. It's got a top lid that actually has uh, storage capability. Um, so this whole top lid is available. Good place to put maps and whatnot. Basically it's just a huge uh, barrel of a container here on the frame. It's just giant. All right, inside is a radio pouch for uh, Prick 77 from back in the day, uh, which I will show here shortly that it is practically uh, combat ineffective for, for bug out purposes when you're packing uh, civilian uh, gear. Uh, three or th there are, yeah, three top pockets here which were uh, pretty much intended for uh, magazines. Alright, weapons magazines, either uh, 230 round or maybe some uh, 20 round uh, 7.62 for the um, for the M14 maybe. I don't know, this came out in 73. M14s were kind of phased out at that time, but basically uh, six more magazines of uh, NATO 556 for the M16. Three uh, larger pockets. Two, two, of the, two of the pockets on the outside are actually thinner and they also, the outside pockets have pass-throughs so you can uh, slide gear uh, behind them. Now the center pocket does not. It's sewn tight. There is no pass-through. However, on the medium Alice, the center pocket, which is the same size, has a pass-through in there as well. The uh, Pockets are secured by double snaps as well as a uh, drawstring tie for uh, some dual redundancy, I guess. The center pocket does not have the, uh, the drawstrings. Okay. Um, on the bottom, additional attachment points for your sleep system uh, with normal straps, generally using this style of, uh, of webbing here to pass through and loop around your sleeping bag or uh, attach to the bottom of the frame, but this bag really just kind of it takes all the, all the space on the frame, unlike the medium which ends about here. You can actually secure your, secure your straps through here, through the frame, around your giant sleep system, yada yada. But basically, uh, this thing is just a huge half a barrel of uh, space to stuff whatever you're going to need for whatever mission. There are uh, different hanging points here. Again, this is uh, for the Alice clip, uh, not compatible with Molly, but uh, Alice clip areas here and here, here. Um, additional tie-down 
areas here and here. So again, you could wrap another strap type thing through here, you know, and secure something that away. Um, two port canteens, uh, e tools, etc. And then these eyelets here, I don't know how well you can see these. Uh, these eyelets were meant for uh, again 550 cord type threading through here to have uh, more potential to strap stuff down. There's uh, an instance in the uh, Dash 10, the user's manual for this thing, where uh, like on the pistol belt, the bayonet, the field, the field bayonet, can slide through here and then actually be hooked. The bayonet device. I'll try and swing a picture in there if I can find one on online of the bayonet. Uh, scabbard and how it hooked to the old style pistol belt and that's what these two holes here are trying to simulate are the uh, two rings uh, rings on the pistol belt with which to thread that and the scabbard would go through the pass through and then you, so you'd have your uh, either a machete or uh, or your um, bayonet your service bayonet it can go on either both sides potential on both sides for that and it has the same identical uh, tie down areas here for again two core canteens or e-tools or more straps sideways to maybe tie something uh, along the side here all right so that's the down and dirty all right I'm gonna look at uh, before we load this thing I want to look at uh, something uh, that I find kind of uh, kind of funny about this one of the first uh, indicators of trouble with this bag. And I will be right back. Okay, first I want to uh, show you guys what this looks like. Uh, I'm going to don the pack empty so there's nothing uh, in here. But I want you to see uh, one of the problems already uh, with this pack. Now, I'm not a big guy. I'm 67 inches. Okay, so uh, if I get the uh, the back strap, that's what the, the lumbar pad is called per the dash 10, the back strap, where it should be, and then adjust the shoulder straps accordingly. Uh, what you find out is the top of the frame is too high. I mean, if you're going to go in the prone, you're going to break your neck. If you fall down, you're going to break your neck on the top of the pack frame, which <laughs> is a serious problem. Okay? Um, also, what I want you to notice, I want you to see is um, modern packs, the, the hip belts are designed to straddle the uh, top of the hip bone here which is in line with the bottom of your navel um, and this the the waist strap that's what the, the, these two uh, uh, straps are called they're waist straps so you have the back strap which is the lumbar pad and then the two waist straps um, is not wide enough, same as with the uh, the ILBE assault pack, it's not wide enough to grip that uh, that hip bone to get the weight on it. So you're really not doing anything uh, by this with this system. It's it's pointless. I mean you're stabilizing it a little bit, but again this is with no there's no load in here at all. It's just the uh, the frame and the bag. Alright also I don't know if you can tell, but the uh, shoulder pads are rubbing. They have contact on the neck. Like I said, I'm not a big guy. I might have a 16, 17 inch neck. Um, and both straps are touching the neck, which is a problem uh, over time. You're going to get a rash. You're going to get rashes uh, on yourself as you're as you're continuing to, to move. Um, so that's a problem. Uh, the only way to adjust it is 
The only way to adjust it is farther up. If I tighten these uh, straps, which aren't really, they're not really load lifters uh, by function. So um, it's not a real uh, solution. Again, you, another part of the problem is that you'd have to remove the pack unless you have your buddy with you to do any adjustments. All right, but all this does is move it closer and makes the, the distribution of the weight on the shoulders. Now there isn't any, right now there's nothing, no real pressure on the shoulders here, but uh, because the rubbing on the neck, uh, it's gonna be already, uh, you can tell that this is just gonna start bugging over time, all right, let alone uh, a 20 mile day. Okay, so let's go ahead and load this thing up, and uh, we'll see the difference. Once it's, once it's loaded, it does uh, carry differently, and uh, I'll show you that. But first, let's uh, pack it up. Okay, I hope uh, you guys can see this well enough. Okay. <clears throat> As mentioned before, uh, this bag is fairly cavernous. All right, pretty big, but um, this radio pouch meant for the PRC-25 and the PRC-77 um, is pretty much useless right now uh, with how um, I'm configuring my stuff. Um, and I'll show you why. Okay, normally in the back of my packs, I will put the uh, uh, camelback, and with this with this particular system, there really is no place, no molly uh, area to attach a camelback. So, because the radio pouch is only halfway uh, the length, I mean it's sewn right here. There's the seam. You see that? There's the seam of it right there. That's the bottom of the pouch, so <clears throat> sticking a camel back in there, that isn't, you know what I'm saying, that isn't going to work. All right, so that's a no-go. Um, next to that is the 20-inch uh, saw viver, and that's a no-go that sticks out of the top. So automatically, my uh, this is my system, how I pack my bags, because, again, I want the heavy things... Um, pretty much between my shoulder blades as, uh, as I am uh, maneuvering around with my load. I want it between my shoulder blades. So I want the heavier things higher, uh, higher up between my shoulder blades, uh, closer to the tops of my shoulders as I, as I can get. It's like uh, if you, you ever carry something down low and then you're struggling with it until you hoist it up on your shoulders and you're like, oh, no problem. <laughs> same kind of same kind of principle. You know, you want the you want your frame to your body to support the load. So anyway, so this pocket serves me no purpose for the items that I would normally put in the uh, I would first pack in the back of the bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this thing has the strap going through it and that the strap will keep this pocket out of the way, okay? So I will begin with the camelback, and you can see the camelback being on the, on the floor of the pack now is almost um, just a couple inches from the top of the bag, so it's pretty good use of space right there. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, because this thing is so huge, um, you can start putting larger items on there. So here's a three-man tent, and again, we're we are bugging out to uh, live. No tarp shelter here. Not with this. Not with this big old bag. We have room. So we're gonna use it. So three-man tent. 
Oh, here's a comparably sized, comparably sized uh, air mattress by um, Sinmat. Or I'm sorry, Xped. It's the Xped Sinmat Seven. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you guys that in another video here shortly. Okay, so with all three of those things in there, um, there's still, well, I can't show you because it, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, there's still half the bag in the front here to use, to utilize. So I go back to my old theory of putting something light on the bottom to force the heavier things up high. So I'll lay that down sideways. And try and work the, the form of the bag. The bag is so big uh, this way that uh, without something to hold it up, you know, you kind of have to use what you're packing in there to uh, build the frame the, the size of the uh, of the bag to fill it up and uh, and kind of frame it. <laughs> All right, so um, now that that's there, I can add other things like a uh, sleeping bag. So this is the uh, Halo Recon Recon Three training bag. Gore-Tex jacket. Now this isn't, you know, a lot of this gear, uh, people look at the stuff and think, oh wow, that's his, uh, that's what he's, that's his theory, that's his recommendation, that's what he's using. It's what I have at hand. I don't have, you know, another $500 to go buy uh, an Arcturix, you know, Ultralight Super Science Gore-Tex uh, thing. This is just, it's what I have. So, that's why I'm using it. Okay. Pot with the, uh, my fleece, Equix Level 3 jacket in there. So we're sort of getting there. We still have like a lot of room in the cracks and crevices, um, which is good. I mean, you need it to pack your stuff. So, all right, now that we have room, what I'm going to do is uh, add the uh, the tent frame. These are the tent poles for the Seed House SL3, and again, I, I have room. <clears throat> behind the water bladder because I want the water bladder since I know the water bladder is going to mold itself around whatever it's resting against it'll protect the uh, tent poles from uh, becoming deformed and now I also have room for the uh, saw viver just for advanced uh, wood processing bar heavy bowie and these are just things that I always take okay so there you go and here's your extra socks t-shirts yada yada <clears throat> water filter want to protect that If you're going to filter water, it's probably going to be a deliberate act, so uh, meaning probably at a rest stop. So you might not want to put something that sensitive on an outside pocket where if you, 
you know, you've been walking for 15 miles and you take your pack off and you're careless and you just let it crash to the ground and you crack your ceramic filter and then you're screwed. Okay. These are uh, rain pants. <clears throat> And you can see there's still plenty of room that's good because one thing that I haven't addressed in any of my videos really uh, that hard is food. I have not really addressed food, so that would be an issue. Um, so this pack has plenty of room for more knickknacks and whatnot. Just throwing in some uh, gators here. Alright, and that's pretty much, I mean, there's still room in here, but I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. And these outside pockets here, again, intentionally meant for uh, 30 round M16 magazines. I can put uh, my stove. Stereo pen. So whatever you you know whatever you need to put in here you can put in here. Neck gator and fleece cap. Okay, a lot of people, I think what I would put in here are extra, extra maps. Um, and what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, I'm not going to put uh, any further uh, sleep systems or anything uh, on the bottom, simply because if you look at the pack, you can't even, you can't even see the frame. Yes, you can. You can probably strap something down here, but then when you set your pack down, it's gonna fall over. You know, it's just gonna be a mess. So why? Just you know, just why? <laughs> you know. All right, central pocket seems tailor-made for my uh, Basha tarp shelter here. The Swag Shack by Opsec. Hopefully, if I get a chance to travel someplace, actually go on a trip, I'll be able to demo that for you. But there's a there are a couple of demos on on YouTube already for the Swag Shack. You can look it up. It's one thing about this. This YouTube thing is there's so much redundancy going on. I'd really like to avoid it. Okay. Poncho. Now here you can see, I mean, that's what? Ten inches a foot maybe long, I don't know. But these pockets absorb it all, it eats it all. All gone. Bye bye.
essential. Alright. Maybe some gloves. That's the problem with this pack is if you're gonna, there is no everything to get out. Anything you're gonna get out of this pack is gonna be a deliberate act. You're gonna have to stop unless you have a unless you have a battle buddy to uh, to do it for you. You know to take uh, take the items you need out. Um, it's gonna be deliberate. I mean, <clears throat> even working these straps. Here is a uh, is a major effort, and if you're wearing this pack, and somebody's out here tugging on your strap, <laughs> it's going to be an ordeal. saw at the beginning of the video why I wouldn't why I wouldn't load stuff up here as, as you saw at the beginning of the video right I had my uh, sleeping pad uh, on here all right so uh, I'm not gonna pack it on here right now but any, any bulky stuff I've seen people put ponchos and stuff in here and if it's all bulky your other things that you're gonna need to strap on top because you can't strap it on the bottom if you, you know, if you use the straps and strap this thing on the bottom of here, you know, you set it down, you set your pack down, and, you know, you might, you might break something on the inside, right? I mean, yeah, totally, totally doable, you know, I mean, whatever you want to do, it's your, it's your choice, but I would rather be able to set my thing down flat and have a stable bottom platform and have something like this or maybe a sleeping bag or tent on the outside on the bottom. So anything that I would strap on, I'd strap on the uh, on the top. Okay. Um, so there it is packed. Um, again, once you have the full form of the bag, now you can see uh, where you can uh, strap stuff down. Okay, entrenching tool, uh, two quart canteen, but again, you're stuck with uh, with the uh, the Alice system with these uh, types of clips. These are the uh, Alice clips. All right, Molly doesn't really work on here. I thought I would be a genius and try to uh, take these water bladder bags that I bought for my ILBE pack, and these are. Uh, multicam. This is a multicam thing. I think it's from some kind of Chinese manufacturer. Not real high quality. Some kind of laminated uh, rubber on the inside that you don't want to wash in the washing machine. This will just dry rot real fast. And it's got the same uh, the same material on the inside. Um, but uh, uh, and here's another cool thing too. Is there's another pocket on the inside here that isn't really protected um, so kind of two pockets pretty neat but uh, I thought that I would be able to use and this is a four four rows or I should say four columns wide of four rows I thought I'd be able to just put it on there um, but I can't if it was a and you can buy accessory straps but that brings me to a whole other point um, people spend so much uh, time and energy uh, trying to customize these things, trying to fix the frame problems. You know, they'll they'll use the Molly Two, the Molly Two rucksack uh, hip belt and shoulder pads, and um, there are other companies that make a whole business out of putting molly all over the outside of these bags and you know if you're gonna spend so much money uh, modifying uh, outdated technology why don't you just buy something modern instead of 
I mean, what are we trying to cling on to with this stuff? I don't, I don't understand. Okay, so I could not, I could not uh, attach. Um, this would be a perfect on both sides because now you have Molly additions. You can add more stuff on here. Plus, you would have two, three liter uh, water bladders on the outside instead of on the inside, and then maybe the radio pouch on the inside might become functional. Just a thought. Anyway, so this was useless. Um, but you can hang stuff here. Okay, so you can hang stuff here, 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 something smaller. I mean, you know, more uh, like uh, a canteen, maybe a canteen uh, pouch or something like that. Um, the potential's there. Are also uh, two straps through here to hold something lengthwise on the on the side. So um, okay, let's go ahead and put this on and see <clears throat> the real problem with these bags. Back at you.